Oh, hello. In this video, we're just gonna give you a shop update. It's not really a build video. I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff, answer some questions, show you what we got going on here because there's a lot of cabinets, there's a lot of stuff going on. And yes, that's really it. And a couple shop updates. First being, I actually have a helper now. And he's kind of like part-time for right now. Somebody that I've known for a little while now and he used to, he was a carpenter, he's worked in shops. Uh, he actually taught shop class in a high school and stuff like that. So he knows his way around the shop and he's been uh, working for about a week and a half now. Like I said, it's kind of part-time right now because he does have some other stuff going on, but it has been a huge help and I am very grateful. His name's Rowdy and he's a freaking cool dude. So he's been working on this kitchen island and getting this thing kind of situated this week and I've been working on other stuff. So I wanna walk around and show you some of the cool details on this kitchen. So everything that's kind of here right now is mostly kitchen, except for these two. You guys saw this vanity a couple of weeks ago, the build video. This is another vanity. We got to just hang the doors and drawer fronts. But the rest of this stuff is kitchen. These, and then here's the island. And so the kitchen in this house is actually not, there's not a ton of cabinets. I think the pantry has more cabinets than the kitchen. That's that's on the docket for this week is, is the pantry, as well as obviously finishing up some details on this. But Rowdy has been working on the island. The islands, I always make a platform for. Um, so that's what these plywood pieces are. And he's got some more over there. So he's gonna build the actual toe kick, like a ladder style toe kick. And we'll set the island on top of that. We're gonna get this thing shimmed up and level because there's some funky details on the corner and we need to make sure our dimensions and everything are good. So Monday, he will keep working on that and we'll get this island wrapped up. So it's just a bunch of big drawers on this side. We're gonna have a panel here. This is a trash pullout cabinet with another drawer above. So then on this side of the island, we're gonna have these two, what will look like doors, but they're just gonna be kind of false panels that will get screwed to this. And then we have obviously storage here. And these are a full depth cabinet that we have on this side because they had the room and so the client wanted to do that. So that's what we did. And then on this side, it's just gonna get a panel. So the rest of the cabinets that I have just kind of setting down here aren't in a particular order that they're gonna go in the kitchen. I've just been kind of putting them together and dropping them down here. So right here, we have a, just a standard drawer bank. Then this is another trash pullout cabinet that actually will go on like the other side of the kitchen next to the sink. Um, this is another drawer here. And then this cabinet, so these two cabinets go on the outside of the range. And this one, this is kind of cool. We have this big panel here and it's gonna be a custom pull out that this whole thing pulls out at once. On one side, it's gonna be tiered with some adjustable shelves and uh, spice rack storage. The other side is gonna have some cups for utensil holders and stuff like that. And then another shelf below for whatever they wanna put in there. But this is kind of the client's idea. I helped her kind of design what we're gonna put inside so that it makes the most sense and utilizes the space the best. But it's gonna be a pretty big pullout. And so I'll show you guys how I did this panel. All right, so you can see this panel and it looks like the three drawer stack that we have next to it. It's got the saw curves in here and it's made to look like a regular drawer stack. So what I did when I cut my panels, I glue up all my drawer fronts oversized. So everything's a quarter inch bigger. So what I did, I left the top rail on each one. It finishes at two inches. So I made it two and an eighth. And then I made this one two and an eighth. And then I just rabbited the end of it, rabbited the end of that one. And then I cut down a drawer front for the top. And then on the back side, everything is flush here obviously except for the panel, but where they meet up here, it's all flush. And I just biscuited and glued this and clamped it together. And then we're left with this, with the saw curves, and it looks pretty cool. Moving down, this is a, this kind of is in a corner. It's just a narrow cabinet. We're just gonna have like some tray dividers in there. Got a bunch of big drawers here. 
Then we have sink cabinet. It's pretty standard sink cabinet. And then this is our corner cabinet that um, obviously goes in the corner. It's taller than this thing right now because it has this style coming down. So I just tacked on some pieces of three quarter to lift it up so that I'm not dragging that around. But um, this has got these Le Mans units, which are really great. They're soft clothes. And these ones I really like because they're they're just really nice, good quality, and they're super easy to install. So that's what we got going on in there. All right, so then I thought I would just answer some questions and talk about a few things uh, because sometimes it's easier to just answer questions like this rather than typing paragraphs in the comments. So one one comment that was last week, and a few people have said this to me over the last couple of weeks, so it's kind of interesting. But people say, stop saying we in your videos. It's just you. And I think I remember a long time ago, kind of when I first started my business and I would always say I, and somebody told me like, don't do that. Refer to your business as we. I think for me, I just got so used to doing that. So I'd always say we, even if it's only me. But I think when you're talking to clients and stuff like that, it definitely sounds better and even when it is only me in the shop there's more people involved like I have somebody that does my drawings I have somebody that makes my drawers there's other people that are involved so I've always just kind of said we now I do have somebody else in the shop directly working with me so I'm gonna stick with we next the screws cabinet screws there was questions about the black screws I was using and if they're drywall screws. One sec. These are the screws that I use to assemble cabinets. I typically like to get them in the nickel, which I still have some inch and a quarters, but they are these guys. Come on, focus there. Anyways, that's it. It's a square head, square drive, and like I said, typically I like the nickel ones, but when I ordered more, they only had them in black. But yeah, they're not drywall screws. These are made for assembling cabinets. And so those ones are from my supplier, Worth Lewis & Co. up in Portland. But I know like there's tons of brands of cabinet screws. Hayfula makes their own. There's, I mean, there's tons. Uh, but Pertaining to the drywall screw thing, yeah, don't use drywall screws to assemble cabinets. They're very thin. Drywall screws snap easily, and they're made for drywall, for hanging drywall, not for, not for building cabinets. So I wouldn't recommend putting cabinets together with uh, drywall screws. It's just probably not a good idea. And then this week, or today actually, it's Saturday, you guys are seeing this on Sunday, but I did a post asking for some questions or whatever that I could answer in Instagram. I swear, some days my stories get like thousands of views. Some days they don't. They get like a couple hundred, which is like super weird. But I'll answer some of the questions that I did get. Want to come visit. That's my buddy Marshall. He's working uh, at a fire camp up in northern Washington. If I had the time, I would definitely come visit. Have you ever used the Evo Eclipse Clear Witch Sheen? Yes, I have. I use the 20 Sheen. That's been working pretty good for me. What's a fair hourly rate that I should charge for installation? Hard to say. I mean, if you're working for yourself, you have your own insurance, working on high-end jobs, stuff like that. I mean... You got uh, it. It depends on your area. There's a lot of variables there, but if I'm if I'm doing hourly, I'm at like 95 bucks an hour. I mean, I know guys that charge by the day. Or hard for me to to give you an exact number for what you should charge because, yeah, I don't know. But if you're if you have your own company and your own insurance and your own everything and you're doing high-end installs and stuff, I mean, you gotta charge accordingly. So, how do full overlay hinges work when two cabinets butt together and you want an eighth inch reveal? Uh, just like this. 
when they butt into each other, you just can adjust them to have an eighth inch of reveal. I set my hinges so that when I drill them, I'm about a sixteenth in from the end of the cabinet. And then these hinges have like an eighth inch adjustment. So that gives me whatever I need. If I need to come in another sixteenth or if I need to go out and be flush, I can do that. Do you keep materials, plywood, drawer slides, etc. stocked or buy per project? Plywood, I'm usually pretty stocked on. I buy uh, stacks uh, at a time. Drawer slides and hinges, I always order extra. So like this job I needed, I needed, uh, I don't know, what did I need, 38, I think, pair of slides. And I think I ordered 42, or I might have ordered 48. I always, I always have extra drawer slides, and I always have extra hinges too. Like if I need 100 hinges, I'm ordering 110 or 120. So I end up always accumulating stuff. That way, I always, if if a job comes in and I need to get it done quick, I have stuff on hand that I can do. Or if I'm making something for myself, I have stuff. How did you start out with your own business? I kind of covered all this in another video a couple months ago, so I don't want to get too into detail, but I was working at a shop and I started to kind of build my own small shop at home and take on side work and it just kind of grew and grew and grew to the point where I couldn't really do both anymore, so I quit my job and went off on my own. Do you actually measure your hinge plates or just shim the door and screw them in place? Uh, I'll be honest, I do not measure for where my hinge plates go. I lay my cabinet on its back and I do a quarter inch shim and put the door on edge and then I just screw the hinges in and that gives me my eighth inch offset off the cabinet and it works out. It works out really good. That, that only really works on overlay. Can't really, can't really hang, hang doors like that doing like inset or anything like that. But yeah, that I did not. Not a lot of questions today. So, oh, and then the Zeta P2 video, that's gonna, I'm gonna make a video on that that'll come out next week. I wanna kinda go in depth. It's gonna be more of just what I use it for. The machine can do a lot. I don't even use it to its full capability. So it's just gonna be kinda how I use it. So we'll show you that. I also want to show you a cabinet really quick. All right, so I wanted to show you guys this. So this is obviously just one of my standard lower cabinets, right? So this cleat on the back, in a lot of my videos when I show install and I show me using this cleat, everybody thinks that this is a French cleat. It is not a French cleat. A French cleat has like the miter on it and this doesn't. It's just a three inch square cut piece of half inch that's nailed and screwed to the back of the box. If this was a French cleat, or first let me show you, get you to understand kind of how I install. So when I get to the job, I find the high spot in the floor and all that, and then I set a cleat on the wall accordingly, depending on what the floor is doing, so that it'll be to the bottom of this. And that thing is gonna be perfectly level going across the wall. I usually take off the feet in the back because typically, a floor is always kind of, if it's gonna be out of level, it's usually pitched in, so it's higher up at the back wall. So I'll take the back feet off, and then I'll hook this on to that cleat, and then all I need to do is shim up the front, because I know it's gonna be level going across the back, it just is gonna need to be shimmed up accordingly in the front, so that it's level coming out. This works really good, it's fast. I can install stuff quickly, and I'm not shimming on the floor four different points on the cabinet trying to get the cabinet level. It works really good. If this was a French cleat, it would not work. Why? Because the wall, walls are never straight. So if I need to, when I get my run of cabinets together, if the wall is doing this down the line and I need to shim, I always need to shim the cabinets off the wall in certain spots. If it was a French cleat and it was hooked onto that miter, when you shim it off the wall, your cabinet, it's gonna come up. It's gonna slide up that miter. So French cleat wouldn't work. So this is not a French cleat. 
It's just a square cleat. I will do a, a real install video, a detailed one, when we install this job. Greg is going to be helping me out on it. And so that'll be good. We can kind of walk you through the process. But I just wanted to show you that because I get a ton of questions on that and people in videos, especially on Instagram where you see quick kind of clips and everybody saying, French cleat, you can't have a French cleat or why are you using a French cleat? Blah, blah, blah. It's not a French cleat. It's not, okay? So yeah, so there. So that's really it guys for this uh, week's video. We've got a big push on this job this week. The next job that we're doing, we're doing for these same clients are, we're at making the interior doors for their house, which I'm stoked about because Making doors is really cool and I haven't done it in a while and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So we'll kind of go on that journey together and we'll make some stave core doors. So that's gonna be sick. We do have some new we do have some new Patreon folks over on the Patreon page. If you didn't know, we have a Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel. We've got, let's see, JR Reader, Justin Addy. And Jason Zillman are the new Patreon supporters. So appreciate you guys. It is a huge, um, yeah, that just means a lot that people would give money to me to help support the channel. So that's awesome. Where You can also get some merch on the website, hats and shirts and stuff like that. All the links for all that stuff are down below. But I'm excited to keep this stuff going. The next kind of build video will be something with this job. We're going to get into the pantry and hanging doors and we'll go over it'll probably be like a tips and tricks video showing you some stuff like that but and then i have my home office which right now is just like a guest bedroom and i have like a little literally a little plywood desk that i just ripped a sheet of plywood in half and threw two little legs on that i'm using for my desk right now but we have some family visiting right now and then when they leave me and my wife is she's going to help me with with that room i'm obviously going to build the furniture but i have an idea for a couple really sick cherry desks so that will be awesome i'm excited to uh to build those and we're definitely going to do a build video on that so that's it that's it for this week guys that's all i got like comment and subscribe and all the good stuff and we'll see you in the next video Peace.